getting proof of a person's addiction or anything like that is generally sometimes hard, right? Or we'd have to get somebody else to like say that they have this or some kind of medical write up or a psychologist or, you know, something. Yeah. But like I had a client that had dementia and they were like, this is not sufficient. He should have filed his tax returns. And it's like, because he didn't get diagnosed with dementia until like three years after. And it was like, but don't you know, that's how dementia works is that people go undiagnosed for a very long time. And then eventually it becomes so bad that someone in their family or someone near them takes them to get evaluated and they find out they have dementia, but they've been going undiagnosed for years. And so I just thought it was the most unreasonable response I have ever heard with like dementia doesn't qualify for a reasonable cause abatement for filing late. And it's like, this man doesn't even know where he lives. And so I had medical records saying somebody had dementia, but they wanted an affidavit from his friends and family saying he didn't know his name or how to drive around four years before he got that diagnosis. Like, okay, if that makes you feel better, but like it's reasonable to assume that somebody with a dementia diagnosis has a late diagnosis and goes undiagnosed for many years, right? I'm just saying, like that's a ridiculous response. We had to go to appeals, we eventually won. That seems like it shouldn't be that hard. And guys, if you wanna resolve your back taxes with the IRS without hiring costly tax professionals, check out my workshop where I can teach you how. And all you have to do is comment Tax Rescue below, give me a follow, this is the link in my bio, and click Tax Rescue 101. And I'll see you guys there.